In this video, I'm showing you my five most used techniques by data scientists and data analysts from the NumPy library. So if you're struggling to understand when and how to use the NumPy library, this video is for you. And no, this is not my background. <laughs> For the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to be using the spider IDE, which is part of Anaconda, and this is what it looks like. And we're basically going to be using this IDE because we have the option of checking our code as we go through it. So on this part here, on the left side, you're going to write your code, and on the right, you're going to be able to check your results. Now, for this tutorial, we're going to be using the NumPy library, which is part of Python. NumPy is one of the most important libraries you need to know as a data scientist or as a data analyst because it's part of Matplotlib and Pandas. So all these three libraries together are going to help you on your journey to data science. So NumPy is actually a numerical library and that's what I'm going to show you today. So in case you have not installed the NumPy library yet on your computer, what you need to do is go on your command line and type pip install numpy and that is only if you're on windows but if you're using a linux system you're going to need to do sudo install numpy and after you do this then your computer is just going to go on the internet it's going to download the package and it's going to install it for your python 3 language so let's get into it i have already installed NumPy on my computer, so let me just show you a few tips and tricks on how you can manipulate data using the NumPy library. NumPy is a numerical library which basically works with arrays or lists of numbers, whether they are one-dimensional arrays or multi-dimensional arrays. And we talk about multi-dimensional arrays as in terms of matrices. So let me just show you how to create a NumPy array from scratch. And that's gonna be our first example. So I'm just going to write here one, create NumPy array from scratch. I'm going to comment this. Before we even start writing the code for this, we're going to need to import NumPy into our ID. So what we do right now is import NumPy as NP. And you always need to do your imports at the beginning of the code so you have access to them in the entirety of your code. And right now, what I'm gonna do is create a new variable and that variable is going to be a NumPy array. And let's call it new array equals NP dot zeros. And we can do here five, for example, and we do a print of new array. Let's run that. And you can see here on the right side that we have a list of five elements which we can populate later on. If you see this type here, the dot means that we have populated our list with float type numbers. So float type numbers means 0 0.5, 1.2 and so on. Uh, you can also do it as integers, but you need to actually tell Python before when you create the NumPy array of what type you want it to be, whether integer or float. This time it's just going to be float. All right, let me just comment this. Now this is one way of creating a NumPy array. Now I can actually show you a different way of doing it when you actually just plug in directly the numbers you want to have in the array itself, and then we're going to give it a type. So let me create a new array. So array one, I'm going to call it, and that's a new variable. And then we're going to do np.array. And here you can actually start giving the numbers that you want to have inside the array. So let's say we want two, four, five, and seven. And that is what our NumPy array is going to contain. And now I want to give it a type. And let's make it float. We're going to say d type equals np dot float 32. Okay, so now let me print it. Print 
array one and run. Here you can see on the right side that we have again the numbers that we chose right here on the left with the type float. So it's going to be 2.0, 4.0, 5.0 and 7.0. All right, so that was another way of creating a NumPy array from scratch. Now let's move on to the next exercise. And let me comment this. There we go. I'm gonna clean my console. So for the second exercise today, we're going to create a matrix using the NumPy library. So let me show you how to do that. For this particular part, I'm actually going to create a new variable. But first, let me just write this. So create NumPy matrix and I'm gonna comment that. Perfect. Now we know what we're doing. One way we're gonna create this is take the previous array we have created, so the new array, and we're gonna give it a shape. So I'm gonna actually create the matrix using that array. New array dot shape equals. And here you can actually just add however many columns and rows you want your matrix to have. Um, let's do parentheses 5 and 1. Now let me print that out. Here you go. On the right side you can see that we have one column with five elements. Now let me show you a different way of doing the same thing. So new array equals np dot zeros and then let's do two and three. Now let's print it out and run it. There you go. And we have populated that with zeros, but you can always plug in whatever numbers you need in that matrix. But this is how you actually Create it. So the next exercise we're going to do is to create a new array within a range. Create array within range. Let's comment this. So this particular exercise is going to be very useful when you want to create plots. So keep that in mind. Now let's create a new variable and I'm going to name that array1. And what we're going to do is array1 dot len space and here in the parentheses we're going to give it a starting point so we're going to start at two an end point and at the end how many elements so this is the starting point of our array this is the end point of our array and this is how many elements our array is going to have so now let me just print that out print array one Let's run it. Whoops. Oh, sorry, it's not array one here, it's NP. My bad. So I'm gonna run it again. There we go. So here you can see that we have two, four, six, eight. We have started our array at two, we ended at eight, and we only have four elements. This particular exercise is actually going to be very, very useful for you when you want to create visualizations using the NumPy library. Okay, so for the fourth exercise, I'm going to show you how to add, remove and sort elements within a NumPy array. So what we need to do is again create a new variable. And now I'm going to call it test array. And what I'm going to do right now is use the code we have learned in the previous exercises and create a new NumPy array. np.array parentheses and then square brackets and here we're going to just populate it. Let's say one, two, three and four. That is our array. Now let's print it out. So print test array, run the code. And here we have the NumPy array populated with four elements from one to four. Now let me show you how to add elements to this already created array. We're going to create a new variable and we call it test1 equals np from NumPy append, which you probably know from normal Python lists, so inside the parentheses, we're going to just take the previously created array and append new numbers to it. So we're going to do test array, 
comma, and let's add square brackets here because we're adding new numbers, five and six. There we go. And now let's print test one. There we go. Now we have the same array here from one, two, three, and four from the test array. And here we added five and six. Of course, you can add any numbers. You can work with any numbers you want. This is just an example to show you how we actually append numbers to your NumPy array. Okay, now let's delete a number from our created array. So we're gonna create a new variable and we're gonna call it test2, np.delete, parentheses. Again, we're gonna take the previously created array, so test array, and here we're gonna actually need to name which element we want to delete. And remember from Python lists, the indexing inside of a list starts from zero. So if you have a list of five elements, you start from zero, one, two, three, and four, right? So that's five elements. You start a count from zero. So let's say we want here to delete the first element in our array. So we're gonna do np.delete test array, so our array, and element zero, because that's the first one in our list. There we go, now let's print it out. So print test two, run it. And you can see here that our list is left with only three elements. So two, three, and four. So we deleted this one. And let me show you how to actually sort the elements inside of an array. In order to do that, let's create a list with unsorted elements and sort them with the use of NumPy. Let's create a new variable called unsorted array. And we have here np.array, parentheses, and then square brackets. And let's give it a few numbers. So one, four, two, 13, 3, 7, 9, and 0. Now with the use of NumPy, we need to create a sorted array from the list that we have already given it. So let's create a new variable called sorted array, np.sort unsorted array. There we go, let's print it out and run it. Here we have the sorted elements inside of the unsorted array. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 9, and 13. If you take a look, these are the same elements from the unsorted array, but in sorted order. All right, so the last exercise we're gonna work on today is gonna cover indexing and slicing. That is super important when you're working in data science and data analysis, because most of the time, we actually do not want to work with all the elements. We just want to select a few of them. And we do that with the use of indexing and slicing. Let me create an array and let me show you how to do that. So let's create an array called data equals np.array parentheses and then square brackets. Let's do one, two, three, and four. There we go. Now we want to do some indexing. We want to take a look at the first element in our array. So we're gonna do print data square brackets and zero. If we print that out, we're gonna have printed out the element one because that is the first element in our array. Now let's say we want to print out the second element of our array. We do that by print data square brackets one. Now let's run that and you can see here we get the answer two. Okay, now we have looked at indexing. Let's take a look at slicing. So now if I write print data square brackets, zero, colon, two. What do you think this is gonna do? I'll let you one second to figure that out. What I did right here, you can see that after running this code, we get a list, we get a new list with two elements, one and two. And why do we have that? Because we have told Python that we want to print the part of the array starting from the first element to the second element. 
So we have indexing starting from 0 to 2. So 0, 1 and 2 stops. Now let's do print data square brackets 1 and colon. So let's run that. And you can see here that we have returned a new list with three elements. So we have two, three, and four. Why? Because we actually told Python that we want to return a new list without the first element. So let me comment that. So we do that. And now the last part, we're going to do print data. Inside the square brackets, we're going to do minus two and colon. So remember when you're working with Python lists and you take a negative numbers when you're slicing them, that means that you're actually going to look at the end of the array. So when you say negative two, you're going to look at the last two elements of the list and so on. Now you may wonder why use NumPy arrays instead of Python lists. Well, for one, NumPy arrays are said to be 50 times faster than the actual Python lists. So this is one of the actual benefits of working with NumPy arrays. You have numerical data, you can transform, you can shape, you can index, you can actually slice lists, and it's actually going to make this so much faster than a regular array. This was it for today. I really hope you understand more of how the NumPy arrays work. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Oh, and if you want more help on getting started on your own data set, I have a free guide for you at biancadata.com. I will leave the link right here.